Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Great to have you all back with us for another episode of Celebrating Act 2. Along with my partner, John Coleman, we're with the forgotten Hollywood, Hollywood historian, raconteur, Manny Pacheco. I can't even say the word or spell it. Raconteur? Raconteur? It has to do with raccoons. That's something you know, things about raccoons. (laughs) Well, you're not only a raconteur, Manny, and a historian, but you're an analyst, an analyst. <laughs> I want to bring up a, a video. I don't really know when we did it. Somewhere in the past, uh, we touched on comparing today's actors to actors of the past. I think mm. I think I brought up the subject that you know, the the, the actors today don't have the kind of roles that the the classic actors, Jimmy Stewart and those guys, Clark Gable, they, they had different roles available to them. And they were different characters, different actors from a different era. But when we discussed that, we just touched on it. And I remember distinctly, you said that you thought, uh, for instance, Tom Hanks was today's Jimmy Stewart. As mm-hmm. Very similar acting styles, the odd shucks kind of attitude. Roles. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure I agree with that, but you've probably got a whole bunch of them. We only touched on it back then. Let's go through some more. Well, let's begin with Tom Hanks and James Stewart. That's usually the one folks go to when they want to say, look, today's actors are great and they could have worked uh, in, any, in any genre or any generation. And they always go right to t- Tom Hanks and James Stewart. I, you know, I could see Tom Hanks with a big bunny next to him. I mean, it's to me, that's not that's not something I couldn't see. I could also see James Stewart, you know, playing Mr. Rogers. So I, I think that the comparison is fair. Uh, James Stewart could be very edgy in westerns. Tom Hanks just made Hearts of the of the of the World or News of the World. I'm sorry, News of the World, News and that world, was. Right? That was a, a kind of an edgy Western. So I mean, there's the, the, I mean, it's not an exact science here. Oh, but also, I, well, you forgot that Tom Hanks had a, a character named Wilson. Yes, he had a character Wilson. named Wilson. I could That's see right. James Stewart with a beach ball. I, yeah. <laughs> But there are others. I think my, my favorite comparison is always Daniel Day Lewis and Paul Muni. Uh, they they, mm. they took the, and not because of the parts they play, but because of the preparation they made in their movies. Paul Muni would spend years in character before he would actually even appear on screen. And Daniel Day Lewis is notorious for playing yes. the role yeah. exactly. You know, in character, whether he was on screen or off to the you know detriment of his family and his friends. I mean, he would just he would stay as Lincoln, for example, for like a solid year. He wouldn't get out of character. And that's yeah. the way Paul, and that's the way Paul Muni was. Wow. Well, that is that's a good comparison. Of course, that's kind of the their methodology as opposed to the roles right. they played or their the, what we saw on screen. Right. Um, how about somebody compare a modern day actor compared to the suave Cary Grant Hmm. well I don't think this is a perfect comparison either but I think George Clooney comes to about as close as as anyone for one thing he's very good looking I mean I I mean there's no no one's going to say he's not very very uh, photogenic very uh, telegenic or or moviegenic uh, screengenic Uh, and and they're both prone to do comedies they both have very guarded lifestyles. They, 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 Cary Grant was very secretive about his life throughout his career. In fact, he would always speak in the third person about Cary Grant, and he was saying, you know, Archie Leach, if he could be anything like Cary Grant, he'd have one, one hell of a life. So, <laughs> so even Cary Grant never thought of himself as Cary Grant. And I think George Clooney is that kind of person in, in life. I think he's kind of secretive about how he, he controls things. And, and I think his, his roles are very similar. I mean, they can be very uh, uh, fun. They can be also serious. Uh, and and I, think, I think George Clooney would have worked really well with Alfred Hitchcock. So I just thrown it out there. So how about that? So how about, how about uh, who would be Meryl Streep? Meryl can do just about it, Meryl Streep. Yeah. She does just about everything. Who, who had her kind of range? I think that there's only one person that could have been Meryl Streep. And if you ask... Meryl Streep, she will tell you it was Betty Davis. Betty Davis had such range 
especially as she grew, grew into middle age. Well, who hasn't been better at middle age than Meryl Streep? She can yeah. play the mature woman. She can play a villain. She can play a lighthearted comedian. She can actually sing. I think Betty Davis can do all of that except sing. And I think that that's your, your best comparison. I think that today's historians will look back and say the best actress of the 1940s and 1950s was arguably Betty Davis. And if you say the greatest actor, uh, actress of the 2000s and 1990s, maybe even to the 1980s, was probably Meryl Streep. So well, another I think thing about Meryl Streep, another perfect, thing about yeah. Meryl Streep, I just want to make sure that we get this in here. She's one of the few actresses who can play tall. And she plays <laughs> Julia Childs. And she she's not that child. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's not I, she's like, so I don't think Betty Davis was that tall. I think she was a little wisp of a thing, but she. No, but she Meryl Streep could me. play tall. Yeah, she, she could wasn't. Play Meryl Streep was not tall, but she plays <laughs> tall. I do have some surprises for comparisons, though. I mean, you know, you think Robert De Niro, and you want to say, "Wow, Humphrey Bogart." You want to say James Cagney, but truth be told, I think Robert De Niro's counterpart from the past is Edward G. Robinson. Not really? very good-looking mm. guys. Uh, could play comedy as well as drama, could play soft and gentle. You look at Robert De Niro in A Bronx Tale, yeah. and that's about as soft a piece as you're ever going to see anything Edward G. Robinson. For example, The Vines Have Tender Grapes, a very, very tender piece. I think yeah. De Niro and Robinson, they could, and really, they could play gangsters like no other as well. I mean, you look at you look at Key Largo and 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 Robinson's gangster in Key Largo. I mean, De Niro. That was a part made for De Niro. You know, yeah. thirty years later. Yeah. So, you know, so I can, there's 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 uh, somebody that I have mentioned a lot is one of my favorite, uh, Matt Damon, and yeah. he really has. He although he's known for boring, and action and and strength, he really has a pretty uh, wide range of stuff from Back to Good Will Hunting to the uh, Amazing Mr. Ripley. And uh, he's doing a lot of stuff now that's really not very bornish at all. Well, where do you where do you go to find an equivalent? Well, to me, you, you're thinking a good-looking guy who has range and can play a lot of different roles, and and can also play himself if he needs to. Paul Newman, I think, I think that that's really? that's the, yeah, I think that that's the equivalent right there. I think he could have taken some of Paul Newman's roles and he would have been just fine. I could see him in Cat in the Hot Tin Roof. I could see him in The Sting. How wonderful would he have been in The Sting? Think about that. Yeah, I would have thought more that's like true. Steve McQueen. Okay. Well, well yeah. Well, not only played action stuff, but didn't he play Papier Young or something? Uh, yes. The prisoner? Yes. This is wide range of uh, things. Well, I guess yeah. No, I could see Newman. Yeah, maybe Steve McQueen. Maybe maybe I have to rethink this. That's that's a really good point. Here's another one I think will surprise you. Denzel Washington. Who who's Denzel Washington 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago? For me, it has to be somebody who can play a range of characters in a variety of ways. And um he could play tough, he could play meek, he could play angry, he could play friendly. For me, that character actor, or that actor actually, is, is Brock Peters. I think yes. Brock Peters had such mm -hmm. range, uh, such intensity in his performances. It's easy for me to see Brock Peters and Denzel Washington. Yeah, I was going to say, I think intensity is a good word, because I, I what I remember Brock Peters doing mostly, and Denzel Washington is very good at this, is that contained anger and that contained, you know, that, yeah. intensity that's held back right and then um, i'm trying to think of what a denzel washington movie was where he is a a fixer he's a former uh, a former cia agent he goes and right. fixes i think it was the equalizer okay and okay. Uh, and he had that same kind of calm on the outside but you can see he's seething and yeah, and, and you always saw that in a brock peters role he's always seething i mean even yeah. when he was sad and defeated in to kill a mockingbird there's there's that that inner defiance that's just really really good yeah yeah and so yeah and, and here's another one i think that I, I i i have to mention glenn close let's see let's pick an actress who had absolute tremendous range was beautiful when she was young was versatile when she was older and never won an academy award let's see who would that be maybe really? barbara stanwick barbara stanwick Did either one of them have won an academy award no <laughs> amazingly wow. and they could play mm. tough I mean, barbara stanwick yes. is great at tough 
Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, she was, she was just tough. Emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. emotional. Glenn Close has that same toughness about her. Yeah. And there's and it's that toughness that's kind of, you know, it's kind of alluring. I, 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 they have an allure to them that's, yeah. it's a, 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 that seethes underneath. And I just love the two of them as a comparison. I think that's a, that's a great yeah. comparison. Well, they both another, have another, inner another, strength. Another woman with a range and has been in a wide variety of uh, pictures, Kate Blanchett. Yeah, well, there's only one person that Kate. And in fact, she played the character to a T, and that's Catherine Hepburn. I mean, just watch yeah. her in the Aviator, and it fit her to a T. And and you know, Kate Blanchett is that kind of actress that you see is very casual and comfortable in slacks. And Kate yes. Hepburn, yeah. you know, started the tr 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 tradition. Her and Marlena she invented them. Yeah, they. Yeah, her and Marlena Dietrich invented the idea of wearing pants in films. And so they're very versatile. I think Kate Hepburn and Kate uh, Blanchett, a pair of Kates that I think are favored comparably. Uh, let's go with Westerns. Here's another one. Jeff Bridges. I mean, who might, mm. you know, you see Jeff Bridges today kind of with the, with the, with the beard and looking a I'd little say grizzled. John Wayne. Yeah, and he, and he played John Wayne in True, you know, he, he remade True Grit. But, you know, he didn't act like John Wayne, I don't think. I think he acted more like a contemporary. I think more like a, like a Clint Eastwood. But to me, Jeff Bridges is kind of this quiet, you know, straightforward, straight shooter. Yeah. For me, it's Gary Cooper. I think he's Gary really? Cooper. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I can see that. I can. And see when that. they were younger, they could look good in a suit and tie as well. You look at Mr. Deeds Goes to Town. You have Longfellow Deeds in a, in a, in a tie and a coat. Yeah. You, see, you know, you look at uh, you look at the, the jagged edge where he, you know, where, where Jeff Bridges plays this this uh, publisher and he looks good in a coat and tie. So, yeah, you know, they could play urban. They could play Western. I think that's yeah. a great question right I'm there. I'm still good. I'm still going with John Wayne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and here's my here's one more I got to give you. It's hard to find a comparison with Spencer Tracy. Not too good looking. Wide range of of acting chops. A right. variety of different kinds of roles. Could play right. villainous, but more often than not, just played a tough anti-hero. For me, that's Gene Hackman. I think Gene Hackman hmm. and Spencer Trades, I mean, Gene Hackman arguably might be the finest actor of the last 50 or 60 years. I mean, really, I, I believe that. Yeah. And uh, Spencer Tracy was the best actor of his generation in my in my estimation. So I, I can see that comparison. Yeah. They're both not very good looking, but boy... Are they eminently watchable on screen? Sure. They're, yeah. they're scene stealers. They can steal a scene easily. No, yeah. no problem at all. Yeah. So I want to give you um, what I consider the ultimate method actor, today's method actor, Christian Bale. Christian yes. Bale, mm. I don't know if you remember the movie The, the Mechanic. He did something like lost 200 pounds and put it back on again and what wonderful wonderful movie yeah. terrific acting and he was willing to go literally change his physique for that movie you, you look at him in the fighter and an american hustle and you can't it's, you can't believe it's the same actor right. yes you're absolutely right i think he is the marlon brando of today absolutely mm. uh yes i, I could oh, i, I mean, got one right oh see, i think you're absolutely <laughs> right you know there are those who compared marlon brando to ryan gosling but, I mean, Gosling, yes, if, if it's just Brando playing Brando, you know, per se. But if, if you're talking about Brando and Guys and Dolls, if you're talking about Brando, Brando in Tea House of the August Moon, if you're talking about Brando in The Godfather, well, Christian Bale probably is a better choice. Yeah. I think it's a more accurate choice. Uh, but it's interesting. Uh, wasn't Ryan Gosling in uh, La La Land? Yes. And that that's a comparison a to the Brando of... Guys and dolls. Guys yeah. and dolls. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You know. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I absolutely. Maybe maybe it takes two actors to play Brando. <laughs> <laughs> Only because of his girth. But yeah, <laughs> Christian Bale's a great choice for Brando. I think Christian Bale, you know, I think can be virtually unrecognizable in his roles. When, when they did Ford versus Ferrari, where he actually kind of looked like what he looks like, yes. I was just shocked. Oh, so yeah. that's what he looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and know, Brando and could do that too. Yeah, absolutely. Another, another uh, current, uh, what we consider basically a gangster type, okay? Although I loved him with Michelle Pfeiffer in a film that I keep bringing it up because I, I want to do a whole episode on uh, Pacino and Pfeiffer and Frankie and Johnny, one of my yeah. favorite films of all time. Oh, but I thought you were going to say Married to the Mob. 
Yeah. Well, that's Al Pacino, Now, Al Pacino. Al Pacino has a... On screen, Al Pacino has this ferocity. I mean, you look at uh, Dog Day Afternoon or maybe uh, Godfather Part Two. Yeah. I mean, he's got this... Fer I mean, even the latest film he did, The Irishman, he's got this ferocity on screen that's just big. I mean, w w he won that Oscar, you know, playing the, 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 the blind major. Uh, such ferocity in his role. I mean, really, there's only one actor that has that ferocity of, of, of that era, and that's James Cagney. Both could play, oh. both could play uh, against, good. and both had plenty of bigger than life energy on screen. So for me, yeah. Pacino is Cagney. I mean, that's you know, I can right see. I, I'm waiting now for the remake of uh, uh, Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yeah, <laughs> I think Pacino would be great. He probably went a little long in the. It was sense of a woman. Was out of control. sense of a woman. It was a different kind of dancing, but he could do that. Sense of a woman. Then his mother could thank you, his father could thank you, his sister could thank you, and he could thank you. <laughs> or was that let me, Eddie Foy? Let me let me that leave you with one more. I'm going to give you one more. Okay. And this is one that's not as obvious, but I'm gonna, just bear with me on this one. Kevin Spacey and Clifton Webb. Clifton Webb mm -hmm. was Mr. Belvedere. Uh, he could play a very fussy, just a mealy mouth, nasty uh, type. And who who is better at playing mealy mouth, nasty types than Kevin Spacey? And by the way, they both, uh, well, he does currently, and Clifton Webb did live with their mother. So there you go. Well, I have one more for you. It's, <laughs> it's not an actor, not an actor. And. Um... Uh, this will be a surprise to you because I know you can't possibly have prepared for this, but uh, uh, Manny Pacheco, okay, I think that he, his counterpart back in the day might have been Walter Winchell, except Manny oh. Pacheco was nice. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Walter I, Winchell. I don't know. I don't know if that's that's my type. Um, he was really a mean sob, and I don't. Yeah, think I'm I... saying. I said you were Walter Winchell, but only nice. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Had a hopper. I, I would have to think. Should I, mean, I said hat? I've been told that if you just look at my, if you look at my smile, you kind yeah. of cover this and you see my smile, that I smile like Alan Alda, but that's about it. Okay, that's a nice comparison. Yeah. So I, I don't think I act. Or, Except. Or, or, you know, you no. can sign off by saying, Mr. and Mrs. American, all the ships at sea. I'm Manny Pacheco. <laughs> <laughs> you say it. <laughs> so take us out, John. Manny, <sighs> Manny, thank you. Always fun. Always fun to talk movies and uh, stars and Hollywood with you. It's my pleasure, and uh, let's do it again soon. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.